Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part six of our tutorial series on making modular textures in Unity. Today we're going to be talking about color blending. So first thing I'm throwing up on the screen here is the uh, diagram we saw last time where we talked about different types of blending uh, for blending different layers of our images. And we really just talked about normal blending last time. Today we're going to shift over there, we're going to talk about the multiply mode of blending. And we see here where it takes the red and the blue layers, and regardless of their level of um, opacity, they do blend, and they start moving the shift from their colors darker, ultimately reaching black. And um, here's another slide I want to show that kind of explains this a little bit better. So here we see this sort of a grayscale um, texture at the start on the left. And then we're going to be adding to it this orange color, and we're going to be multiplying these two, this grayscale and this orange, and the result is what we see on the right. And what's really kind of telling about this is what you see at the top and the bottom. So at the bottom of this image, it's completely black, and we see in the final image, it's also completely black. Likewise, at the top, the original is completely white, and then when we get to the blended image, it's completely the color that we're adding to it. And then we're just in between shifting from black to the new color instead of black to white. And this is obviously just how this works when you're using a black and white image. However, that is probably the easiest way to kind of wrap your head around how multiply blending works. And so that's how we're going to start working with this today. Instead of trying to get into, you know, shifting colors around, which uses a little bit of a different system, I really want to look at taking black and white images and being able to apply a color to them, which is going to give you a lot of flexibility when you're creating procedural content for your games. You can create some simple black and white layers and then apply different colors to them for different effects or for a greater variety of options. There are a few assumptions that we're going to need to make as we're working on this. The first one, as I've said, is that we're working in black and white, uh, but that does give us a couple of kind of convenient things. The first one is that we know, because we're dealing in just black and white images, we know that any pixel we take, any color that we get, the red, green, and blue values are all going to be equal, which means we can really tell what color something is just by checking, say, the red value. If the red value is zero, we know it's black. If the red value is one, we know it's white. If it's anywhere in between, we know it's that level of gray. Um, however, we cannot just use that for multiplying because if we multiply, say we have a, um, a red of 25%, and we multiply that across our applied color, that's also going to affect that color's alpha level, and we don't want to make these suddenly be transparent where we don't want them to be. So we are going to have to actually multiply the colors together, and we'll get into that in just a second. Um, the other assumption we're going to make right now is that when we apply these colors, those color layers that we're adding in always have an alpha of 1. It is possible that you might want to only add like a 50% level to, of a color, but right now we're just going to assume we're going completely... Um, 100% adding a color in. Like I say, it's going to make it a little bit simpler for this initial kind of beginning of multiply blending. Eventually you can get into kind of some more finer, finer detailed control later on. So how this is all going to work is we're going to be taking two colors in Unity and we're going to be multiplying them together. And every color in Unity has four values. It has a red value, it has a green value, it has a blue value, and then it has the alpha value. The red, green, and blue tell you what color it's going to be, and the alpha tells you how transparent it's going to be. When we multiply these, what we actually do is we kind of separate all these values out. We take the first color's red value and the second color's red value and multiply them to get a new red. We take the green and the green, multiply them, get a new green, so on and so forth. And then we take all of those new values that we have, we, and then we create a new color out of those. So we're taking basically those two colors, multiplying all their individuals, and putting out a completely new color based on that. So, let's jump into Unity and see how all this works in practice. So, here we are in Unity, and you're going to see that I've added a few new textures to my project. Um, I'll include a link to these textures uh, in the comments below. Um, they are these three parts to an alien head that I have here. We've got this head, um, some eyes, and a mouth, and you'll see that they are all in grayscale. They all, you know, are white, black, or some level of gray in between. They don't have any color information to them. So we are going to actually go to our sprite maker and we're going to replace these three layers that we have here with these new um, with these new textures. I'm going to start with the head as the first layer. Remember this top layer is going to be the background. And then you can put the eyes and the mouth really in any order you want. Um, 
it's not going to affect because they don't actually overlap at this point. Now it is worth also noting that how I've set these up right now is that I've set them up all to be the same size, 256 by 256, and I have positioned like the eyes are where they roughly should be on based on where the head is and the mouth likewise based on where the head is. Um, you could eventually start using like different sized images and positioning them and things like that. However, that's something we're going to get into a little bit more in the next video when we talk about some optimizations and checking for bugs that we're going to do. So right now we've got our head, eyes, and mouth, and when I hit play, we should see that complete image come, appears now with the head, with the eyes on top, and the mouth on top. Um, however, obviously we don't have any color information yet, so let's add that in now. We're going to go to our scripts, jump over to our sprite maker. I'll zoom this in a little bit. And now what we're going to do here is we're going to, first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new array. Right now we have our array of our pixel layers, if you will, the three textures that we're layering on top of one another. Now I'm going to do three more layers that are going to be the colors that we're adding. So each layer will have its own individual color. So I'm going to say public color array, and we're just going to call this uh, layer colors. I'm going to jump back to Unity because we're going to set these right now actually. Too often I end up forgetting after adding things like this. So I'm going to start just adding, whoops, start just adding one color. And the reason I do that is so I can bring this alpha all the way up. Like I say, right now we're going to make this assumption that the alpha is all the way up for any of our color layers. And I'll make, we're going to make the first layer like a bright green. Make that alien's head green. Now I'm going to change this to three. I'm going to shift these a little bit. I'm going to make the eyes like a blue. And we'll make the mouth like an orange yellow color. You can also change their brightness and um, saturation. In fact, let's, we'll make the mouth a little bit darker of a, like a gold color or a kind of a, really just more of a brown. That's fine. Save that. So now, in the same way down here that we are able to go through each layer and get, um, once, we get to, once we get to this level of our iterations here, we're getting each layer of our um, texture information, we can also get the layer of color. And what we're going to want to do is, depending on what the current pixel we're looking at is, we want to apply that color to that pixel. So. Before we get into our normal blending, in fact, I'll name this down here, normal blending based on alpha, we're going to say apply the layer color if necessary. Because there are going to be situations where we don't even need to worry about applying the color. For example, if there is no, if the pixel is completely transparent, there's no need to add color. Likewise, if the pixel is completely black, we don't actually need to add any color because as we saw in that diagram, black is going to stay black. It's only anything lighter than that that's going to get the color applied to it and might even shift it completely to black depending on what the two colors are. So, applying the layer color, what we're going to say here is if our source pixel dot red is not equal to zero because if as we said we know that red green and blue are all equal so if red is zero then green and blue are also zero and therefore it's completely black so if it's not black then we might want to be applying this color however there's one other check we want to do which is if the source pixel dot a is not equal to zero as well, which is which is what we're checking here is the alpha. So if it's completely transparent, we don't need to do anything. If it's completely black, we don't need to do anything. However, if both of those are not true, it's gray or white and it, it is visible, now we need to add some color to this. So if those two things are not true, then we're going to change the source pixel equal to apply color to pixel and what we're going we're going to give this two arguments we're going to give this the source pixel and we're going to give this um, our layer colors from layer i because remember here in this for loop we are iterating through each layer 
that we have. Now we obviously don't have an apply caller to pixel function yet. We're going to need to create that right now. So down here we're going to return color. Apply color to pixel. And in here we're taking a color which is our pixel and a color which is our apply color. The color that we are applying to the pixel. So one thing we can do here is we can say if the pixel dot r equals one, then we know that it's completely white and all we actually have to do is return the color because as we saw again in that diagram, things that are white just become the color we're applying. So we can just return apply color. However, if that's not true, then we know it's not white, we know it's not black because we wouldn't have gone into this function if it were black. So we know it's somewhere in that gray scale in between. Now what we need to do is we need to multiply our gray with this color to get the kind of the blended color that we want. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to return the pixels color multiplied by the apply color. And what's nice about this, like I was saying, is that each individual value gets multiplied together. So we know that whatever the alpha of this is, is going to be retained because we are keeping the alpha of our apply color at 1. So it's going to be if our, if our alpha here is 50% times 1 is still 50%. Or if it's 1 and completely opaque, it'll still be 1. That's why, like I said, we want to kind of assume that that color is at 1 because we don't want to accidentally change the alpha of the pixel when we that's not what adding color is all about. So we can save this now. Function looks good up there. So now we should be able to jump back to Unity and now we should see that each of these layers gets a color applied. So the head should be green, the eyes should be this blue. They will be a darker blue because if we look at that texture again we see that it's this dark, uh, dark gray with these kind of a lighter gray highlights and the mouth will be brown. So we hit play and sure enough that's exactly what we get. So each each time we go through now, say here when we when we first get to these pixels these are just black so we're just returning the black but once we get into these white pixels we start changing them to green and then once we get to the eyes and the mouth we are applying the appropriate colors from those pixel layers. So obviously again this is just working with um, black and white color blending or adding colors really. Um, there's a little bit of a different system if you're taking something like say one of these colored shapes and you want to shift the color. Um, that's probably something I'll get into in more of an appendix video versus this main um, texture series because it gets into things like luminance and um, kind of figuring out the brightness and shifting colors around which really may not be what you need like I say for a really you can do so much if you just start with black and white textures and then add in um, color to them. But it is something that might be useful for certain situations, so I'll address that in a future video. Um, but kind of off an offshoot of this main series. What we are going to do next in the main series, however, is do some bug checking for a few things that can crop up um, with this system, as well as some optimizations to make sure that we're not running functions when we don't need to be. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.